What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to discuss fluids that is rotating in a cylindrical container. So consider a vertical cylindrical container that is partially filled with an incompressible fluid, so that means the density is constant and the radius is r. Here, the cylindrical container is rotated about this axis with a constant angular velocity given by omega equals omega k hat. Because of the nature of the object, it's better to use cylindrical coordinate system r theta z, wherein the axis r and z are given as follows. This is r and this is z. So each element within the fluid undergoes uniform circular motion with acceleration given by the centripetal case. And that is A equals negative R omega squared. So therefore, the equation of motion becomes the gradient of P equals rho times G minus A. And this is equal to negative rho g k hats plus rho omega squared r hats. Taking note that the pressure gradient in cylindrical coordinates is given by this equation. Therefore, separating this to its scalar form, we now have derivative of p with respect to r equals rho omega squared r, derivative of p with respect to theta equals zero, and derivative of p with respect to z equals negative rho g, which tells us that pressure are only functions of r and z, and it is independent of theta. This tells us that the differential of pressure becomes dp equals derivative of p with respect to r times dr plus derivative of p with respect to z dz or rho omega squared r dr minus rho g dz. From our previous lesson, isobars are defined as points within the fluid whose pressure is constant. So therefore, the differential is zero. We now have rho omega squared r dr equals rho g dz. And if we're going to integrate this on both sides, we can now have the equation for the isobar. z for the isobar is equal to omega squared over g times the integral of r dr. And this is equal to omega squared r squared over 2g plus an integration constant. So here we can see that z varies with square of r. So for a certain integration constant c, this equation represents a parabola, and the corresponding shape of the surface is a paraboloid. And the new free surface would look something like this. If we're going to use the boundary condition at the lowest point of the free surface, that is, the height of this points, and let's call that hc. Mathematically, this is z at r equal to 0 is equal to hc. Therefore, the equation of the free surface is given by z surface equals omega squared over 2g times r squared plus hc. Again, this represents a parabola, and the corresponding shape is the shape of a parabola. So here we take note that this shape holds only when the fluid has a sufficient amount so that even at the bottom of the container is still covered in fluid when rotating. Now this time, let's solve for Hc. So to solve for Hc in terms of the height of the fluid when it is not rotating HO, we first obtain the volume of the fluid originally before it starts to rotate. So when the container is not rotating, the volume of the fluid is given by V equals pi r squared HO. On the other hand, when it is rotating, the volume of the liquid is equal to the integral of dV, where dV is the volume element in cylindrical coordinate system. So here the volume element dV is 2 pi r z of the surface times dr where ZCS is the distance of the surface from the bottom of the container. So therefore, the volume of the liquid while rotating is written as integral of 2 pi r ZS dr from 0 to capital R, where R is the radius of the cylindrical container. 
substituting our equation for the z surface, we now have v equals 2 pi times integral of r times omega squared over 2g r squared plus hz dr integrated from 0 to r. Doing the integration, this becomes v equals pi r squared times omega squared r to the fourth over 4g plus hc. So equating these two expressions, we now have omega squared r squared over 4g plus hc equals h naught. Or simply hc equals h naught minus omega squared r squared over 4g. So therefore, the equation of the surface is now given as z surface equals h naught plus omega squared over 2g times r squared minus r squared over 2. So going back to the differential of the pressure. So going back to the differential of pressure given by dp equals rho omega squared r dr minus rho g dz. And the pressure variation is obtained as the integral of dp from p1 to p2 equals the integral of rho omega squared r dr from r1 to r2 minus the integral of rho g dz from z1 to z2, which is simplified as delta p equals p2 minus p1, and this is equal to rho omega squared over 2 times r2 squared minus r1 squared minus rho g times z2 minus z1. If at the origin p is equal to p naught, therefore the pressure at any point rz is equal to p naught plus rho omega squared over 2 r squared minus rho g c. So that's it. The fluid undergoing rotation in a cylindrical container will have this equation for your isobars and this equation describes how pressure varies with position R and Z in within this container. So I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!